guys, welcome back. This is the leadership series. We're in section three about leadership demands. And the second one is 3.2. And we're answering the question, why be a living sacrifice? Like who wants to give up their wishes in their life? Why do you want to do this? Okay, so let's get to the scripture. First Corinthians 619. You're bought with a price. Glory God in your body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? 2 Corinthians 8, 5. Give yourselves to others for God's will, and not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So gave in this situation in the Greek is to give, to offer, to disregard entirely my private interests and give as ever much as I can to the one demanding something of me. 1 Peter 2, 5, spiritual sacrifice as an act to God through Jesus. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're going to evaluate some of the Greek in here. Being built up is to properly build a house to edify and build someone up, helping them to stand sturdy. And what are we building? A spiritual house. So this is a house or nation of the body of Christ in the invisible sphere in which the Holy Spirit imparts faith, reveals Christ, etc., relating to the human spirit, emanating from the divine spirit that exhibits effects and character. To offer up. So we're going to offer up something, right? To bring or carry up properly to the goal. To carry something up as through each sequence to reach its needed consummation to bring to the altar and then spiritual sacrifices we had this on the beginning lesson so this is pneuma katikos thusia relating to the human spirit in the invisible sphere in which the holy spirit imparts faith reveals christ etc properly and offering the official sacrifice prescribed by god hence the offering that finds acceptable because it's on his terms. 1 Peter 3, 17. If it is the will of God to suffer for doing good, for it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Suffer is pasco. To suffer, to endure, to experience and to be acted upon and experience good or ill treatment and feel heavy emotion. The capacity to feel heavy emotion and suffering is from these two words, which is one is pathema, which is suffering, strong emotions, and two is pathos, which is strong feelings or passion. Okay, so we're gonna move on to lesson 3.3, which is how to serve as a living sacrifice. So Romans 1, 1. Life set apart, separated to the gospel. Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. So what's his goal? He's a leader. He is separated to the gospel of God. What does that mean? To have the proper boundaries and separate from a previous condition or situation to mark off and to point for a certain purpose. It is from two words. One means to mark boundaries off and one means to set apart. 1 Corinthians 4, 11 through 13. Labor while within difficulties. That means because you have a difficulty, you don't stop. You work through the difficulty. Listen. To the present hour, we both hunger and thirst. And we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure. 
Being defamed, we entreat. We have been made as the filth of the world, the offscouring of all things until now. All right, so let's look into this one a little bit. To labor is to grow weary from bodily toil or mental labor with so much effort until worn out, depleted, exhausted, diligently laboring. I promise you I get to this point constantly. I'm doing it like I'll work for a month straight on a set of these lessons for you guys and I'll work 10, 12 hours a day and I'm exhausted and brain dead by the end of the day. Can't even like carry on a conversation because I've studied so intensely looking for the perfect thing that the Lord is guiding me to, to give to you. Um, I have stayed up around the clock praying intensely for certain people or for certain things because it is what is needed. It is not because my wishes are to stay up all night. No way. I have been skipping a lot of sleep since 2020. That's for sure. <laughs> but I'm just saying, as a leader, you're supposed to labor with that kind of intensity. Okay? So it's saying that they're being reviled. Reviled is to be abused by saying harsh, mean-spirited, insulting words to dehumanize, demoralize, to humiliate with words and heap abuse upon verbally. But his response is, they do that to us, but what we do back is bless them. What does that mean? To speak well of, to praise, to properly speak, to show the truth of benefit. So then it says, being persecuted, we endure. What is persecuted? This is um, Dioko. Dioko was to be aggressively chased after like a hunter, to chase in earnest with the goal of overtaking or apprehending, to harass, maltreat, or cause someone to suffer oppression, victimization, ill treatment, tyranny, punishment, discrimination on the account of something without hostility. It's just being chased. It's just that process of, oh my gosh, we're going to really take a hit on this. But there's no hostility. That's very important to understand. Then it says we endure. Well, how does he endure? Living out the faith God works in us, still bearing up even after going through the needed sequences or course of action, a completing process to tolerate and endure to the end. Okay, then it says they're defamed. This is to be slandered, to use evil words, to speak ill of another. Often words of ill omen, language of scorn and critique often used wrongly to defame and give a bad report of. So what is their response when they're treated that way? That is to entreat. What is entreat? To encourage, to invite, to urgently encourage someone to do something. It's from two words, to be close behind and to make a call. It means to personally make a call and it refers to believers offering up evidence that stands in God's court to continually offer the gospel and pray to God on behalf of. So these people are being super mean to Paul and he's telling them the gospel and he's praying to God saying, please save them. That's the kind of attitude that a leader is supposed to have. Okay, we're going to keep reading. First Thessalonians 3, 1 to 5. The sound, that means people who are on track, will suffer tribulations and not be shaken. Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith, that no one should be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. For in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation just as it happened. And you know, for this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor might be in vain. All right, so let's look into the Greek on this one. 
To endure on this one is stego, which is to cover closely, to keep water out, to endure patiently, to be under a roof, to endure because shielded under the Lord's protection. Establish is to fix firmly, a support that fixes plants to firmly root without vacillation. Then it says to encourage, to establish you and to encourage you concerning your faith, right? To encourage, to encourage, to invite urgently, encourage someone to do something. It's from two words close beside and make a call. This is again, that call to Christianity, to the call of the gospel and praying heavily um, for those people to God on their behalf. Shaken. We don't want them to be shaken by the afflictions, right? So shaken is to wag the tail and thus disturb or to be perturbed or agitated. Tribulations. This is the lipsis. So persecutions, afflictions, tribulations, used of a narrow space that hems someone in to feel confined and without options, restricted, compression, tribulation. This carries the challenge of coping with the internal pressure of the tribulation, especially when there is a feeling of no way of escape. And then it says, we told you we were going to suffer this tribulation, this pressure. But then it says, you know, just as it happened. Just as it happened means to become, to happen, to merge, to transition from one point to another. He was saying, I told you it was going to happen and it did happen. That's a prophetic, you know, concept there. First Peter 2 20 to suffer patiently for what credit is it? If you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently. But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. Okay. To suffer is Pasco to experience ill treatment, to feel heavy emotion, passionately strong emotions, typically negative, that which need to be endured and to be afflicted. So the emotions coming with someone else giving you an external um, affliction or ill treatment. Patiently, which is hupomone, to endure through the trials, through God's power. And what is this? commendable before God. What is commendable? Grace. This is his grace. God freely extending himself and his favor to man with gratitude. The next verse, Romans 12, 12, in hope, persevering in tribulations, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. So let's see what this means. Not lagging is not shrinking back, not being lazy, troublesome, or idle. Diligence is with haste. That means quickly heading after it, right? Fervent is to be hot or boil over with. What is it saying? Boil over with. Fervent in spirit. So that means you're boiling over with the Holy Spirit. Serving is devoted as a slave, obedient, giving up all property rights to the owner and willingly giving over one's will to be self-governing, to serve, to willingly yield to obedience. Who is this to? The Lord. And then it says rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing is to be glad or rejoice. Remember that only comes from God. Only Christians have true joy. And then hope, which is to anticipate, to welcome with anticipation and expectation of that is certain. I say rejoicing in hope, rejoicing in those two together, patient in tribulation. So patient is hupomone and tribulation is thalipsis. That ex external pressure gives you an internal feeling. Okay. And then steadfast is to attend to constantly and persist. Uh, the strength that endures staying fixed in a direction. Prosketero is that man with the um, eternally holding on to that heavy weight. So to persist, to constantly persist the strength that endures staying fixed in a direction with intense effort, regardless of difficulty. So 
we are supposed to continue through difficulty. You get a horrible headache, who cares? Keep pushing. You have some medical condition, doesn't matter. You have, uh, like me, your husband's in the hospital. I kept working at the hospital because I was called to do that job. I'm not going to take the hurdles in life and stop. You can't do that. You got to just push through it and be like, Lord, you got to show me how to make this work because I don't have enough hours in the day or God, you got to give it to me. I don't, I don't know because I don't feel well enough to get this done and he will, he'll provide it. All right. The next one, Colossians 1 24. I rejoice in my suffering for your sake. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. So this kind of suffering is the emotional suffering as a result of um, things that befall a person. Okay. So just emotional stress. Okay. Emotional, deep feelings of any sort. Then it's for your sake. So the leaders have that emotional stress because they're serving other people. Okay. So when you're the leader, you're going to have some pressure and that's normal for your sake on the behalf of, okay, for the betterment of, in the interest of truth and the effect the afflictions that's that internal pressure so this whole thing i rejoice in my suffering for your sake that's very much an emotional suffering okay because both sides of that coin are external pressures and emotions and deep-seated emotions then acts 20 24 finish with joy to testify of the gospel but none of these things move me nor do i count my life dear to myself so that i may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. So to finish the race is to bring to a perfect end, to reach the end of the race aimed at the final conclusion. And in, in the literal definition, it says, like the old pirate's telescope that unfolds outward one stage at a time until it is at full function and effectiveness. So that is what to finish the race is, to, to unfold until we are fully effective. Then to testify, to give solemn evidence. This word is always used emphasizing witnessing one with a high level of self-involvement and strong personal interest as the motivator. So it's from three words. One is to give full, clear testimony. One is to properly bear witness in earnest testimony and one is thoroughly okay so summarizing all this into a um, graphic why and how be a living sacrifice well first you were bought with a price once for all through christ and he did this for others right christ died for others so because of this bought at a price your body is a temple of the holy spirit it is not your own okay then we come up to the top here, be a spiritual sacrifice to God through Jesus. And then off to the right, live a life separated to the gospel. These are all commands given. Okay. Now, if we look at the things that were told about suffering and tribulations, if it is God's will to suffer for doing good, so that means it might be his will for you. The sound, the people that are on target, suffer tribulations and are not shaken. So you can tell if you are on good footing with the Lord. If you go through a tribulation, you do not lose your faith and you are not shaken by the trial. You just trust in the Lord. The third one is give yourself to others for God's will. It is his will that we give ourselves physically, like our energy, our time to others. Okay. Now notice, this also is for others. Now, we're going to come down. If you do these three things in the center, which is suffering, doing good, suffer and not be shaken, and giving yourselves to others for God's will. If you do that, these are the things how you should do that. Suffer patiently, persevere, hopefully in tribulations, rejoice in suffering, for your sake, your being the church's sake, that's for others, labor through difficulty, 
And if you look at all of this, and we talked about being a life separated to the gospel, this is finish with joy, testify of the gospel. This also is for others. So when we come down to it, why and how be a living sacrifice? Why are we doing this? It is for others because the life of a Christian, especially a leader, is keeping the other person in mind. First, true love is doing what is best for the other person. What is best? Making sure they have the gospel. Okay, so that is the end of 3.2. See you next time.